The Daily Beast has the scoop on a new story pertaining to Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert's ongoing beef. And this one might be the funniest one yet because it truly demonstrates how hilariously immature these individuals are. So they reportedly nearly got into a screaming match in the bathroom on the first day of Congress. The Daily Beast explains, on the first day of Congress this year, January 3rd, the mounting tension between Green and Boebert reached its boiling point. According to multiple sources, the two women were nearly in a screaming match in the Speaker's lobby's ladies' room just off the House floor. Green questioned Boebert's loyalty to McCarthy, and after a few words were exchanged, Boebert stormed out. A source familiar with the fight told the Daily Beast. According to another source familiar, while in the bathroom, Green asked Boebert, you were okay taking millions of dollars from McCarthy, but you refused to vote for him for Speaker, Lauren. The first source said Green was in a stall and upon coming out, confronted Boebert about taking money from McCarthy for her re-election and then turning against McCarthy when it came time to vote. The Colorado Republican was allegedly unaware that Green was also in the bathroom at the time. That's when Lauren said, don't be ugly, the first source said before she, in the words of the source, ran out like a little schoolgirl. So these are the type of individuals who are making it to Congress, people with the high school mentality who still resort to high school tactics where they talk smack in the bathroom. It's just it's so embarrassing, nevertheless, incredibly predictable and exactly what I'd expect from these two individuals who are typically pretty unhinged. Now, there was somebody who was, I believe, in the bathroom there to witness this all, Democrat Debbie Dingell, although she's not dishing on the details because she says, uh, quote, what happens in the, in the ladies' room stays in the ladies' room. Okay, fair enough. Now, look, let's, let's circle back to reality here, okay, because these types of stories are fun, uh, but these stories, I think, prove an important point, and that is that these individuals who are this unhinged and immature, they hold an immense amount of power. And what they do greatly affects your life. Marjorie Taylor Greene was assigned to the Homeland Security Committee, so she'll be overseeing policy regarding foreign policy and national security, despite the fact that she's not just unhinged, but she's personally invested in the defense industry. So it's fun to laugh at these types of stories with salacious headlines, but I want to remind you every single time we talk about these types of stories that these individuals have real power that can greatly affect you, usually for the negative. Now, the way that these individuals can do the most harm within this session, at least, is using the entire U.S. economy as leverage to get what they want. And it seems as if the entire GOP caucus has collectively agreed that Social Security is their number one target. But don't take it from me. Take it straight from the horse's mouth. How do y'all plan on cutting Social Security this week? Sir? How do you guys plan on cutting Social Security this Congress? Uh, we're not going to cut Social Security. You're not? Not at yeah. all? Well, what reason the age of retirement? You know, uh, that's interesting uh, that you ask that question. Uh, people come up to me, they actually don't work on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's on the table you're saying? Well, you know, uh, if people want to work on it, maybe you need to give them an incentive to do it. Okay. That was Republican lawmaker Rick Allen from Georgia, and he kind of just said the quiet part loud, and I did a full breakdown on what he said and why it's harmful yesterday, so check that out. I'll link to it down below. But he's not the first Republican to broadcast their intent to cut Social Security. Now, oftentimes, they don't explicitly say, we're going to cut Social Security, but they'll use coded language to suggest that that's what they want to do. Will reform entitlements or raise the retirement age when in actuality, that just means... They want to cut Social Security. Now, even Kevin McCarthy, the leader of the Republican Party and Speaker of the House, said the same thing, essentially. And what makes it worse is what he is implicitly saying he's willing to do to get what he wants. Truthout reports last fall, then House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy said that the debt limit legislation was a time for lawmakers to eliminate some waste. He was likely referring to the GOP's plan to cut Social Security and Medicare, two of the U.S.'s most effective anti-poverty programs, which Republicans Republicans have been attacking for months. So within the context of talking about the debt limit, knowing that you have to raise the debt ceiling in order to stop the United States government from defaulting on its debt, which would be catastrophic, he is going to use that opportunity as leverage in order to push through 
something that would harm the American people, as he calls it, eliminating the waste, as I like to call it, a life-saving program like Social Security that you've paid into for your entire life. That's not the government's money. That's your money. And these Republicans are broadcasting that not only do they want to take your money away from you, but they want to hold the entire U.S. economy hostage in order to do that. And if you think about it, Kevin McCarthy strategically has an incentive to use the debt ceiling as his moment to push this through because this is a divided Congress. So if they just passed a clean bill saying we want to raise the retirement age from 67 to 70, well, that's not going to pass the Senate and Biden could certainly veto it. But what he can do is play a game of chicken with the Democratic Party and say, listen, we want this which is going to be seemingly a cut to Social Security. And if you don't give it to us, we are willing to not raise the debt ceiling and have the entire economy collapse as a result. So the question is, who's going to budge first? Now, the White House is already saying that they're not going to play this game, and they warn that this is not going to be something that they accept. But when we're talking about what will inevitably be a dangerous game of chicken, ask yourself this question. Which party is crazy enough to actually let the U.S., default on its debt, the Democratic Party or the Republican Party, the party where they're literally yelling at each other, nearly yelling at each other in bathrooms. The Republican Party is absolutely willing to do this. And I don't think people fully understand the ramifications if this actually were to happen. So let me play a clip from Congressman Ro Khanna, who was on Democracy Now! And I think that he eloquently explained why this would be catastrophic for a plethora of reasons. It is important for people watching to understand this is debt that the United States already owes. We're not debating how much should we spend in the future. This is obligations that uh, the United States government has. I believe that in this country we should pay our debts uh, and this should not even be a debate. The consequences of not doing that will be spiking interest rates at a time where the economy already is vulnerable. The consequences will mean that some Medicare checks, Social Security checks, uh, food stamp checks will not go out. Uh, so if push comes to shove, I believe the administration should act uh, within their own power, such as increasing uh, the interest rate on bonds uh, to be able to raise revenue. There are other avenues. But really, the Congress should do its simple task of paying past debts. But we're not seeing that going in that direction. Um, I mean, isn't that what the conservative Republicans and a number of Democrats actually want, is to go after Social Security, to go after Medicare, to privatize, and this will be used as a way to do that? Yes, this is what the Freedom Caucus wants. Uh, of course, the consequence of that is also a massive uh, default of uh, the U.S. economy and higher interest rates, probably a severe recession uh, and jolting the global economy. But they don't care. They don't they don't care about breaking the institutions, breaking the economy. You know, if this was just a debate about Social Security spending. I'm for increasing the spending uh, for John Larson's act that would actually increase benefits and not tax some of the benefits of Social Security for working class families. We can have that debate and they can say why they want to cut spending. But what they're doing is saying they want to hijack the entire U.S. economy, subject it to collapse in order to get their goals. And it's going to be an ugly debate. And frankly, Kevin McCarthy is going to be in a very difficult position because they may threaten his speakership if he does what's right for the country. Yeah. So it's going to get ugly. And there were other Republicans on Fox News saying, look, the full faith and credit of the United States is on the line. So, of course, Democrats, they're going to give us what we want, because, again, this is the only way they can get something passed in this session. But the one thing, sickeningly so, that we have working in our favor is U.S. corruption. Corruption runs rampant in the U.S. Congress. I'd say that 98 percent of lawmakers are corrupt and exclusively beholden to their donors as opposed to their constituents. Now, the reason why in this instance it may benefit us and avoid catastrophe is that the donors of the Republican Party would not want to see the United States government default on its debt because that would be catastrophic to them. So that's the one thing that is kind of working in our favor. If the Republican Party is going to listen to anyone, we know it's going to be their donors. But at the same time, 
are enough of them crazy enough to hold the entire economy hostage and potentially tank it in order to get what they want, which is cuts to Social Security and Medicare? Yes. So this is going to be something that I want everyone to pay attention to. The debt ceiling showdown is going to be the most consequential moment of Congress when when it inevitably comes up and people need to pay attention to it. So understand that all of these stories that we cover where we're talking about the dumb things that Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert and Matt Gates says, these are all pointing you towards their character and what they're willing to do and their temperaments. And as you can see, individuals like Matt Gates, they would be willing to go to the mat to get their agenda accomplished, even if that means throwing their own constituents under the bus. I mean, they've done it multiple times. Matt Gates voted against capping the cost of insulin. So they're psychopaths. And that's what I really want to reiterate when we talk about these videos and stress when we talk about the dumb things and the more, I guess, entertaining headlines about Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert, who are arguing in the bathroom. These are the people who control what happens within the next couple of years and you have to pay attention to it because it affects you greatly. And if you don't, you do so You do so at your own peril. So let's all make sure that we are savvy consumers of media. And we acknowledge that these folks, they could f some shit up if they really wanted to. And that's what I want to leave you with.